big issue we have in healthcare, unlike other industries, is HIPAA, uh, uh, healthcare privacy. Uh, there's something called trade secrets. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one hospital competes with another, uh, even though they're not-for-profits. I could never quite figure this out, <laughs> but they behave very much like for-profits uh, in their competitive landscape. So, you know, obviously the patient owes, owes, owns their own information, but who owns the aggregate of information? Because this is a big debate right now. Right. So if I'm a hospital system and I have 5,000 patients in my database, or if I'm a company, an IT company, and I have, I own an EHR, and I have that information in my database, mm -hmm. not the individual patient, but who, who owns the aggregate data? From your perspective, who should have access to it? De-identified, of course, because right. obviously you got to protect privacy. Mm -hmm. uh, is that a trade secret, or is that something that's no really should be in the public domain? I believe that putting information in the public domain is um, crucial to getting um, innovation to really work in the space. Um, and um, I also believe very strongly that patients are ultimately uh, the owners of their own data. And so I think that what we will hopefully see is we're in this temporary period or in transition period right now where there are a lot of companies that um, want to hold on to certain pieces of this data and try to monetize it. But um, over time, I think um, we'll see new information systems come about that put patients more in the driver's seat of actually holding onto data and being able to provide, to provide it to different uh, providers that are taking care of them. Um, and government does have a role in, um, in um, setting regulation to protect patient privacy, um, in setting regulation and kind of fair playing fields for providers to start talking to each other um, and actually sharing data as opposed to, again, hoarding data for um, their own financial purposes. Um, we'll, we'll see. So let me ask you the question in yep. a different way. And I'll use an example. So right now, if the federal government said to Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, Celgene, and Amgen, guess what? All the data you have is now going to be put in the public domain, right? Everything you have about every clinical trial, even in the middle of trials, everyone's going to know. Um, and there really are no trade secrets, right? Put that in the context of the federal government says to the university of whoever, uh, or company X, mm -hmm. uh, EMR company, or a data analytics company, all of your data is going public. De-identified, mm -hmm. of course, so mm -hmm. not the individual patient <laughs> right. level, right? De-identified, <laughs> it's not tied to a person. But you don't own that, that's the public domain. How would that work? In other words, you know, I, I, I struggle with this, and I think a lot about mm -hmm. it. I like both of your opinions. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people struggle with this. So why is it okay for Boeing to keep its information private about what it's doing? and uh, Amgen to keep inf its information private about what it's doing. You know, it, it has to tell the FDA, but that's confidential, right? That's still not in the public domain. But yet, if a company wants to create a new business model where information is monetized, you know, there's the pro and the con of that. How, how yeah. do you look at it? I think it? it's a great question. Yeah. And the first piece being, you know, the government's responsibility to set up the framework to uh, facilitate those solutions. So whether it's updating of, of certain laws or incentives around uh, data exchange, that type of framework is going to be very important for the private industry to uh, solve within that. Um, and with the innovation we're seeing both in immuno-oncology and technology at large, it's challenging for the government to keep up with that as the first piece. The second piece being I think the answer is usually lies when you bring it back to the patient. Mm -hmm. So here we have a patient who is actually the most interoperable part of the healthcare system. The patient is actually going every single place. So finding a way to engage them in, in their information is, is key. And the third piece I want to bring up, though, is there's a subtlety between information and usable data. And so um, a patient, for example, might get you know, PDFs and CDs and all of this information. And um, if there's interoperability or um, partnerships between hospitals, those CDs and those PDFs will be sent over. And that's one exchange of information. But then there's kind of a higher level uh, order of information, which is whether it's processing structured data, um, looking through um, those PDFs and pulling out 
um, information so that it's searchable and mineable. And that's a lot of work that various organizations are doing. Um, and they're doing that to uh, drive insights back down to the patient. And so I think that's another important piece of the information. But um, when we talk about information exchange and data exchange, it's obviously a central tenant of coordinated important care. But all information is not equal. If one hospital is interoperable with another, um, they're either getting unstructured information, which takes a lot of time to re read through just for one patient, let alone millions of patients, um, or uh, it's structured for certain data points. And so looking at that level of um, granularity of the data, I think, is important to, to these discussions.